Namaste. I welcome all the viewers to this national webinar series on Yoga Ramayana Vishwakosha history. For today's session, we have one of the most revered prominent scientists who was closely associated with former President Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, Padma Shri Dr. Prahlad Ramraoji. He has served at various topmost positions at different institutions all over the globe. To name a few, former Vice Chancellor of Defence Institute of Advanced Technology, Director of DRDO, Program Director for Joint Venture Project by Indo-Russia, etc. Today, he will be sharing his invaluable knowledge on Vaimanika Shastra. Namaskara. Ramaya Rama Badraya Rama Chandraya Vedase Raghunathaya Nathaya Sitaya Patiye Namaha Hare Sri Rama When we were all very young, several decades ago, my mother used to teach me regarding Rama, Ramayana. So that's how we all grew up with Rama and we all treat him as an ideal human being, ideal Maharaja, ideal husband, ideal father. So we have a concept of an ideal human being that is Sri Ramachandra. So we all learnt. Along with that when we heard about Rama and Sita, we also heard, read and learnt about Ra Ravana and what all happened in the Ramayana. Sita being kidnapped, finally there was a war and Ravana was killed in the war because of Dharma Yuddha and then Sita was brought back to Ayodhya by Sri Ramachandra in a Pushpaka Vimana. This is the story we heard from our grandparents parents and elders. When we look at that, what excited me in addition to the story of uh, Sri Ramachandra is Pushpaka Vimana. I am talking of more than 70 years and uh, we hardly knew anything much about Vimana at that time. So very intriguing how Sri Ramachandra had a Pushpaka Vimana and how it was flying. And where is it now? Of course, later as I got education, my degree was in aeronautics. I studied very seriously about aeronautics. Then I realized that there is physically no proof available in India or in Sri Lanka about any Pushpaka Vimana. This is what we all came to know very clearly. And the Sri Lanka people, they claim that the Pushpaka Vimana was there in Sri Lanka. That means Ravana as a king had Vimana as one of the flying capable vehicle as a Maharaja. So he could fly using a Vimana. Pushpaka Vimana name he would not have given. It would have been later, later given. But it is said like that. And when I spoke to some young people, engineers from Sri Lanka, they still say that there are airports, the signs of airport being there in Sri Lanka, which was used for regular landing and taking off of aircraft during the king reign of Ravana as a king. Of course, we all also know that Ravana was an engineer. He knew good Sanskrit knowledge. He had the knowledge. And uh, he was also knowing all the various rituals and procedures correctly. He is not a king of only he had bad qualities. He had good qualities also. So naturally, everybody is interested what happened to Vimana? Where is it? Unfortunately, when we look at various strict scriptures available in the country, in any language, Kannada, Samskrita, Hindi, 
we are not able to find a proper proof or explanation of a vimana number 1 number 2 is we also do not have a figure a sketch or a photograph nothing is there like we don't have photograph of sri ramachandra it's only our imagination so it is not there but it is so clearly mentioned that the pushpaka vimana was there it could carry lots of number of people and it flew from sri lanka to ayodhya is it all story fiction or is there a truth in it this is as a engineer as a aeronautical engineer i am really interested and concerned if it was so india probably had a vimana thousands of years ago before anybody in the world could even think of flying forget about vimana nobody thought human being can fly in fact the belief was anything heavier than air cannot fly this is the understanding so you know uh, it was amazing that uh, such a vimana existed in our puranas and uh, i i i fortunately had an opportunity to read about what all was available in the in the scriptures in in our own the scriptures what was there it is said about how the vimana can fly different types of vimanas are there shokana vimana rukma vimana sundara vimana and there, uh, there were rockets which could be fired against the enemy there was missiles which were intelligent rockets see rockets are not intelligent they can be only fired whereas missiles were intelligent all of us have read i am sure many people have read about shabda vedi astra that is if you fire a missile it will go it will he hear the sound of whatever sound you want if you think uh, the sound of a chariot or a sound of a human being or sound of an animal that missile will go towards the sound producing agent human being or animal and home on to the sound producing item that is if it is animal the astra will go and kill the animal if it is a flying object the astra will go and fill the fly, kill the flying object it's called shabda vedi like that there are many stories which explain how the vimanas missiles astra used to work during those days thousands of years ago we are the one who talked about brahmastra brahmastra if you understand brahmastra it is like a nuclear weapon how did indian rishis think of brahmastra king think of brahmastra are vimana are astra this is amazing because we all now know that rishi and scientist are equivalent today we call scientist and the university those days rishi and gurukula rishis used to be in gurukula shishyas used to be there and there used to be many things happening education metallurgy science flying meta materials what happens in the space agriculture health care surgery anything you talk they were being discussed just like today we discuss in a university so it was for them it was very usual only thing we somewhere india has lost the link which was there thousands of years ago india was had a very fertile very matured very sophisticated very advanced science and technology some of it was lost maybe thousands of years ago we are now trying to recreate we are trying to recreate that's all it was there of course there are skeptics who keep saying no no it was not true 
it may be your imagination see when i read about read about uh, vaimanika shastra by you know uh, vaimanika shastra which we go through it by bharadvaja muni he has written for example what type of a dress the aircraft pilot should wear what type of food he should take to make a good flight how it will fly suppose the aircraft is flying you don't want the shatru that is enemy to recognize the aircraft what i should do can i make the aircraft vanish from the air so that i am safe from the enemy or can i make the uh, by pressing a button or operating one yantra can i make the aircraft look like a cloud just look like a cloud that is if a aircraft is flying in the cloud and the aircraft looks like a cloud then you cannot distinguish between cloud and the aircraft so people think there is only clouds no aircraft this is written in number of shlokas how it can be done so the only thing is we don't know they say yantra is there you operate the yantra the aircraft will start looking like a cloud behaves like a cloud see such a sophisticated thinking even if somebody has to imagine i don't think it is possible for a person to imagine when a similar thing whether he when he has not even seen not heard how he can imagine that the aircraft can be made to look like a cloud unless he has a experience of it he has seen it watched it he knows how to do it that means there was science and technology to make such things happen this is what it is otherwise i don't think anybody is can just sit in a corner and and close his eyes and say a vimana will fly like that thankfully i got the vaimanika shastra book itself translated from sanskrita to english english and kannada i read it it is very difficult to understand see first of all we have lost touch with that original sanskrita what was really the sanskrit how it was there what is the meaning of the words number 1 number 2 that sanskrita also had lot of engineering as a measurement systems for weight for length for time for distance you know not like a meters kilograms seconds it was not there but they had to use those parameters to talk about a aircraft so for a distance they have got one measure weight something else time something else months years everything there was a very very precise terminology explanation and also quantification it was there otherwise you can't make a viman you can't build a vimana by just imagining and a vimana has to fly means you it has to have some method of lifting it flying it maneuvering then only it can fly for that you need engine for making it move forward and controlling so it can move left right up down all this is explained even uh, to some extent they have written how engine can be can may made what is the fuel how to make a fuel see today we have all fuels made out of uh, synthetic materials or gas or petroleum product though days there was no petroleum product there were only herbal oils or naturally grown oils so you have to make a fuel out of the what is available at that time in the country so how to make a engine using the oils herbs vegetables available 
in in, the, in our surrounding use it intelligently do lots and lots of processing bring it to a stage which can be a fuel for an engine imagine that was then explained how it can be done we are not able to interpret to the accuracy to which we have to do but to some extent people are trying to decode one understand if that can be done we can build an aircraft in the same way what they have built of course we all have heard that there was one talpade in maharashtra who tried to build an aircraft based on bharat dwaja swaymanika shastra the newspaper cuttings available also says that that aircraft was allowed to fly in the beach of mahara mumbai mumbai beach for a short period it took off landed after what nothing else is known and of course during those days british were ruling so we have no proof and british would have taken away all the, f- the, the drawings photograph literature calculation material everything either they have taken back to their country or they have kept hidden somewhere in india or they have given to some other country like germany to understand because germany was fairly advanced in aeronautics we do not know something is hidden something is kept secret so with both things happening we are not able to locate but proof exists that india was able to fly the first vimana before right brothers flew in america this is the available it is a very sad story that we are not able to locate authentic documents photographs or hardware we cannot show that does not mean that we did not have the science we did not have the technology now over the last 15 20 years we are trying to recreate is it possible and this ramayana that what we are doing yoga ramayana session is allowing us to see can we go back to history locate the sources or the human beings who have got some knowledge meet all the people wherever they have little bit of knowledge then try to collate and understand how was that aircraft made or flown this is what we were trying to find out and also is not just one type of aircraft there are aircrafts which are like more like a rockets there are aircraft where human beings can fly the rear cart will small number of people can fly there are different types of aircraft fortunately i have two of my colleagues one doctor shruti ranganath who has done phd in vaimanika shastra what happened very exhaustive studies she has done there is one more aeronautical engineer called kavya she has also done lot of studies and they have referred to all literature available in the country they have done lot of research trying to go into the uh, whatever uh, scriptures are available try to can we understand to the extent an aeronautical engineer can understand a good mechanical engineer can understand who is today's engineer to know how an engineer 1000 years ago understood flying imagine you have to transport yourself 1000 years ago to know how he could think of a engine like that today we unfortunately or fortunately we have different type of engine different fuel different materials different knowledge base ecosystem everything different but if you want to know which are really was it there it is a it is a, for our as a history of our country and the heritage of our country it is essential that we should understand what was there in india our for generation generations ago how they were doing so i have requested my two 
young friends that is kavya and shruti to give share with you what details they have gathered over maybe last 5 6 8 10 years and uh, some of you would have heard their talks some more talks are going to follow what they are going to do will be what i am telling they will complement what i am doing number 1 number 2 they will substantiate with authentic figures authentic references and what they have found out which is more than what is given in the scripture in the scripture something is given in samskruta but they have done what is known as in samskruta there are three things one is pure literary translation transliteration that means you read a samskruta shloka and knowing the words grammar try to translate into another language kannada hindi sanskrit english translate that is transliteration second is try to understand what the the pandit who has written this shloka had in his mind what he had mind try to understand by seeing the words the words in what context the words have been used the relation between the sentences and words and the meanings this is second way of interpreting what a sanskrita shloka gives for which you need not only sanskrita knowledge but also you have to know the the ecosystem at that time who was saying what what is the purpose what is the object that is second way of understanding a shloka then there one one third layer that is coding these pandits are so intelligent so smart at that time they do not want everybody to read and understand what i am trying to tell like today we are talking there are coding there are secret codes are there and security is embedded inside the words and numbers and letters and communication so if you read it you can't make out because it is coded so when a, when a, there is a shloka praising lord krishna or lord Na, narayana and the goddess lakshmi it is for a common man it's looking like a praising lord narayana or lakshmi but the person who is very smart if he can decode that same shloka he will give entirely different meaning it may be more or most of the time these meanings are more scientific and technological rather than praising narayana or praising lakshmi this is what i have seen examples are there so we need three levels of interpretation of a sanskrita shloka whereas bardwaja muni or whatever ramayana you should be able to go to all the three layers these two ladies are going to share with you all those decoded to the extent possible of course we cannot say they have gone to the bottom most decoding to the extent they are able to succeed today of hard work of about 6 years they will share with you which will be supplementing what i am already int- introduced to you as our heritage knowledge of vimana shastra in india in our country bharat desh so this is what we want to cover as a part of yoga ramayana we are uh, happy to share with you what knowledge we have acquired from ramayana story and what would have been the real flying at that time what sources we have got for us to read and understand and decode and then can we recreate those machines in our way using currently available materials and other resources this is what we want to address as a part of yoga ramayana because this is an opportunity given very very rarely in the country for realizing such things 
So one small story I will tell you at that time. We all heard Rama, Ravana kidnapped Sita and was flying away to Sri Lanka with Sita. Then Jatayu bird came, tried to intercept and protect Sita, attack Ravana. But Ravana was flying with Sita. That means it's not a Pushpaka Vimana. It was just a small, small air, little aircraft, maybe like an executive jet or something like that. You know, you can imagine. Flying two or three people, that's all. He was flying. And he used weapons to attack and protect against Jatayu. And Jatayu was injured. He lost his bird uh, feathers and fell down. This is the story. That means there was a small little aircraft. It may be just a, a person carrying a small, you know, a suit which can make you fly. Carry Sita with you and keep flying. And that Jat you comes, you intercept him, see that he is not able to attack you. You kill him, you try to kill, but he falls down. Injured. See, this is a, see, imagine there was a Pushpaka Vimana type in Ravana's palace and he was able to fly alone with one or two people where he wants to fly. This is amazing. It cannot be purely imagination. It has to be substantiated. So we are trying to do for substantiation and reliving what Ramayana lived. Okay. Rama lived. Can we do it? We have been requesting Bharati Vidya Bhavan Department of Science and Technology to support our activity by providing financial resource, technical support and human resource so that in the country, Bharat, we should not lose our heritage knowledge which was there thousands of years ago and uh, I think we should really, this is what I thought I will share with you and uh, in the next two talks you will hear from Kavya and uh, Shruti Ranganath. Namaskar, thank you. We are blessed to listen to Padmashri Dr. Prahlad Ramraoji on Vaimanika Shastra. Let's meet tomorrow again. Namaste.